Is ISIS Islamic? Are its fighters Muslims? In the last week, both President Obama and British Prime Minister David Cameron have said no to both of those questions, and I think they're making a terrible mistake. President Obama declared that ISIS is not an Islamic organization. And this weekend, David Cameron declared that the fighters of ISIS are not Muslims, quote, they are monsters. Well, it seems to me one can be Muslim and a monster, just as one can be Christian and a monster, Jewish and a monster, Buddhist and a monster, or atheist and a monster. Why does it matter? Because the only way to move forward in this fight is with a clear-eyed honesty in which neither the political correctness that demands we make silly declarations that ISIS is not Islamic nor its fighters Muslim, we can't tolerate that, nor can we tolerate the hate mongers who will attempt to reduce all of Islam to ISIS and its fighters, a position that is equally false and at least as ugly. Look, the truth is, this war does have religious overtones. And it will be crucial that among the issues over which we fight and through which we build real alliances with what hopefully will be Muslim allies in this fight, include the fact that this is really a moment of self-definition for the global Muslim community. But when tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people say, this is what it means to be a Muslim, this is what Islam is, it is both naive and in fact culturally imperialistic to tell them, no, they're wrong. People can and must define and decide for themselves what their traditions are, and they must be held accountable for the choices which they make. Every tradition has had moments when it has been mobilized for horrible things, and every tradition has moments when it has been mobilized for spectacular and wonderful things. Ignoring that choice will not make the bad choices go away. Reducing an entire community with a 1500 year long tradition to its worst moments will not make it better either. This is a moment when all people must make honest choices about who they want to be in the world, including in a war which very much has religious overtones, but isn't a war against any one religion, nor can it be allowed to become so. It is a war about two basic principles. Will people murder those with whom they disagree and feel compelled to subjugate all those who think and live differently than they do? If they do, they are enemies, and if they do not, they are allies, regardless of the name they use to call upon the one they believe in most deeply.